about 250 times more round than a normal ball. So what you're saying is you've managed to outround the sphere, so to speak? Yes. Well, unfortunately, we can't show the football on television for legal reasons, so I'll just have to describe it to you. Um, just please be careful you don't pull the curtain oh, back too far. Don't worry. Gosh, that is extraordinary. That is just so round. Um, mm. <laughs> well, the only way I can attempt to describe it is if you can try to imagine a perfect circle and then round it out so that it's even rounder. That is extraordinary. And when can we expect to see this in the shops, Provastian? Oh, that's a, a moot point, actually, because um, currently it's illegal to sell it in this country as it does contain a working human heart. So, so it's, it's only, only on sale in Germany, Germany at the moment, I'm afraid. Well, best of luck, Provastian and Inastian, and thank you both for showing us your balls. Peter. And I believe we can go to BBC Scotland and rejoin Mario Abdullah Levy, who is now talking with Ros Lamb. Well, Ros, that was a terrific run. London to Aberdeen in four and a half minutes. A new world record. Thanks, yeah. No, tell me what happened to your forehead. Um, I ran so far, I need to drink Kelvin. So after that, I just took to the main train journey. So a smooth journey? Well, uh, I got pulled over a couple of times by the police. Oh, really? Not in serious, just a caution. But in general, it was a very good run. I'm very pleased. Well, Mazel Tov once again. And now Roz Lamb will be running back down to our Look Around You studios in London. So, Roz, if you'd like to take your die to Tetamine Broho Hive, and best of luck. To you, Peter, at Shepherd's Bush. When the Olympic Games take place next year in Swansea Industrial Park, there'll be a record number of new events which have been formally accepted by the Olympic Committee and Swansea City Council. In fact, there are a staggering 22 brand new Olympic sports, but there's one sport everybody wants to play. So look around you sent Peely Marty off to our sister country, America, to try it out. Pennsylvania, USA. When you think of Pennsylvania, you probably think of pencils. But in America, Pennsylvania is best known for its baseball team, the Pennsylvania Pippins. And every Monday and Wednesday, thousands of fans flock to see such baseball legends as TJ Nottingham, Sonny Thompson, and Xythantiops. But it's not just baseball that's put Pennsylvania on the map. Jogging recently became compulsory here, with stiff penalties for anyone who doesn't fulfill the weekly mileage. But now there's a new sport in town, which may be about to take the state and the world by storm. So I caught up with its inventor, Scott Novin. <laughs> now, Scott, the sport you've created isn't a completely new one, is it? Well, not exactly, Peely, no. You see, I wanted to combine key aspects of my two favorite sports into a new hybrid or uh, combo sport, which I believe has the potential to become the most exciting spectator sport at the Olympics. So what are the two sports that you've combined? Tennis and golf. Well, I'm dying to try it out. Now, am I dressed for the occasion? I hope so. Let's see. You've got the, the shoes and the socks, yes, the pants, the hat. All you need is this, and you're all set. Let's play Gonis. Gonis is a perfect mixture of golf and tennis. 
The rules are very simple. Get the ball over the net, onto the green, and into your opponent's hole, whilst avoiding the bunkers and the water hazard. The game was overseen by the world's only professional Gonis umpire, Bunny Knowles, who also happens to be Scott's boyfriend. Go easy on me, Scott. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> With its classy blend of elegance and style, Gonis has become the game of choice for the jet set, with such high-profile players as Manhattan Dave and the Shah of Israel. And Scott even had an order for 40,000 Gonis sets from none other than Tony Curtis. Quite please. Birdie Love. Oh, I think I'm getting the hang of this. We'll see about that. Out. Quiet, please. Eagle 15. Come on, Scott. Come on. Mm. That is for Buddy. Go on, Peely. Quiet, please. Go on, Peely. Tensions ran high both on and off the court. Man, did you not hear me say quiet then? It's off putting to the players. It's to the opponent who you're not rooting for. It's just for him and for me and it's and if you continue i'm gonna remove you from the court do you understand thank you miss marty you are four under par finally it was time for me to put my putting skills to the test I've done it. Against all odds, I've beaten the American at his own game. That was fantastic! Yeah, to get his luck. <laughs> Smarty, congratulations. Played a good game. Bye, please. Bye, please. So, where now for Scott Nolan? Well, I'm developing another combo sport at the moment. Again, it's a, it's a mixture of two other sports. Fencing and darts. really good at Gonis. Thanks, Pam. And the funny thing is, I've never played golf or tennis before. And I was on my period. Obviously a natural. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, well done, Peely. Yeah, well played. Thanks, chaps. And that is a beautiful trophy. Well, we're just waiting for Rod's Lamb to speed into the studio all the way from Aberdeen. And I believe she should be here any second now. While we're waiting for Roz, um, oh, and I believe we're now seeing outside Television Center where Roz Lamb should be speeding into view any second now. Um, Jack, uh, I believe you used to go out with Roz Lamb, didn't you? That's right, Peter. It was several years ago, and I uh, used to fall around with one of her sisters as well. <laughs> Not at the same time, I hope. <laughs> Here she is. That's. <laughs> Four minutes and 15 seconds. Well, that smashes her previous record by, I think, 13, 13 seconds. So that's another world record. Um, well done. Congratulations. Wow. Two yeah. in one show. Well, let's go and say hello. Roz, a new world record. How do you feel? Well, as you can see, the run's really taken its toll because there's been some further miniaturization. Anyway, well done, Roz. <laughs> what an athlete. Well, now it's time for our look around you, Ant Derby. And to tell us about the runners, let's hand over to BBC's racing commentator, Leslie Maxwell. Thank you, Pam. In lane one at five to one, we have Beetleface looking very confident today, a good runner. In lane two, one of Britain's foremost racing ants, Mr. Snips, the favorite at three to one. Fancy Nancy is in lane three. The going's a bit hard for her today, I fear. She's at seven to one. And finally, the rank outsider, Nutmeg, who looks like he's put on a bit of weight recently. He's at 600 to one. Back to you, Pam. 
Thanks, Leslie. Well, my money's on Beetleface. I fancy... fancy Nancy. <laughs> I'm going to take a chance on Nutmeg. How about you, Pete? Yeah, me too. And, Roz, who will you be backing? One pound on Mr. Snips. Certainly, Roz. And there we are. So, Paul, Championess has had time to make her calculations. Can we have her prediction, please? Go on, go. Is she finished? Yes. So, uh, which ant does Champion S think is going to win? Beetleface. Beetleface. Oh, that's my ant. Great. So, let's go back to Leslie for the race. Thanks, Pam. You join us for the look around you, Ant Derby. All the ants are at the starter's <laughs> gate. Mr. Snips gets off to a good start. Nutmeg's refused. Beetleface coming up behind Mr. Snips now. Fatty Nutty picking up speed. But it's Mr. Snips and Beetleface. And that's Thorax to Thorax. But it's Beetleface the winner. Oh, I win. Well done. Well done. Bad luck, guys. And well done. And thank you very much to Paul Allen and Championess. And Championess and Paul Allen go through to the final of our Look Around You Invention of the Year competition at the end of the series, where they could win this magnificent trophy presented on the program by His Royal Highness, Sir Prince Charles. Well, that's nearly all we've got time for tonight. Thanks to all our guests for being such great sports. Thank you to Pravastian and... And Nastian. Oh, I'm s I beg your pardon. Pravastian's dropped off. Well, thank you to you both. And also, of course, thanks to Ros Lamb. Special thanks to BBC Scotland and Mario Abdullah-Levy. And thanks to BBC racing commentator Leslie Maxwell. My pleasure, Pam. And a special thanks to Beetleface, Mr. Snips, Fancy Nancy and Nutmeg. Thanks, Ants. Thanks. Next week, we'll be taking a tantalising look at the world and the future of food. So make sure you make a reservation. So, in the meantime, from all of us here at Shepherd's Bush, take care of yourself. And remember, wherever you are, whatever you do, look around you! <laughs>